Ladies and gentlemen, if you, like me, are a huge camera nerd who cherishes beautifully built professional camera accessories, then don't go anywhere because we've got bridge plates, base plates, side plates and rod mounting brackets all coming up right now. Cue the music. Alrighty, as you can see, we've been busy bees here in Germany and we've developed a whole range of new plates for the Alexa 35 and the Alexa Mini LF. And actually, a lot of these are going to be adaptable to third-party cameras as well. Now, I'm going to give you a little run-through of each of these parts right now as a bit of an overview, but as per usual, this video will be broken up into chapters, so if you just want to find out about the RMB9, then you can skip right ahead right now. But let's start. So, first along on my left is the Hex now this is a handle extension adapter that can be used as a short handle extension for the CCH5 on an Alexa 35 or as an adapter to allow you to seamlessly use the handle extension set that we've had out for a number of years now. Next along the list is the NRB160, which is this NATO rail here that's 160 millimeters long, which works very nicely in the swiveling or articulating bracket that we introduced with the Alexa 35, so that you can have a hinged mechanism for plates that allow you to swing them out of the way when you say need to get to your SDI uh, ports at the back of the camera. This has an integrated NATO rail, so it works really well with the NATO rail clamps that we also introduced about a year ago now. So more on that in just a minute. Third on the list is the UAP4. This universal adapter plate can both be used as a base plate for any camera with a bud compatible base plate system, such as the Alexa 35 or Mini LF. So it would have a flat base, which is obviously infinitely adaptable to whatever you like, but it can also be used as a side plate when you just wanna have a really big cheese plate for mounting all sorts of different kinds of accessories on the side of your Alexa 35. And then we have two new CBPs. So these are the CBP5 LW and the CBP6 LW. The only difference between the two is the rod mounting standard. We've got Studio 19 here and Studio 15 on the CBP6 LW. Now the difference between a CBP5, which is the plate that's existed since the Alexa 35 came out, and the CBP5 LW is that this one is lightweight, or rather it's lighter weight. It's about 15% lighter than the CBP5, so that's about 100 grams. And it also has the mechanism from a traditional bridge plate. So we've had quite a bit of feedback that people like the integrated design because it's lighter. You can have this really nice soft shoulder pad that is very close to the bottom of the camera so that the balance on your shoulder is better. But instead of using the uh, quick release compact bridge plate mechanism, which a lot of people also love, they'd rather have the traditional bridge plate mechanism from say a BP-8 or a BP-9. So both of these plates incorporate that older style of mechanism. And last, but certainly not least, this is the RMB9, which is the rod mounting bracket number nine, and it will basically attach to any plate that would work with a bud system base plate. So for example, I could actually put this bracket on here, or it could go onto the UAP4 as well, but really it's going to be designed primarily for stabilizers, where you would have this, say, SAM6 in a Trinity 2, and you want to just run a rod mounting bracket at the front of your plate here, which you can of course uh, throw on and screw up, so that you don't have to run huge rods from the camera back here all the way to the front to mount a focus motor. You can just put this on and have a very short little stubby rod here with the lens motor attached. So that's the RMB9. But let's get into the detail. Alrighty, let's start with an easy one. This is the Hex A, which is the handle extension adapter. And basically it just lets you adapt from the profile of the CCH5, which is the top handle that comes with all of the Alexa 35 production sets. And that profile there is a little wider than what we had in the past with the CCH4, which is also the same profile as our handle extension set. So you can either use the Hex A as a little handle extension like this to add a few more mounting points, but also it's a nice way to nicely adapt the profile so that when you attach your um, ARRI Hexset Hollywood handle, then it you know kind of all flows nicely and we don't have any sharp edges here. So now I have a handle that looks pretty stunningly beautiful. You can buy the Hex A by itself 
or you can purchase it in a set with all of the other handle extensions, which actually comes in a foam inlay that will drop directly into a little Pelican case. So you can look very cool when you rock up the set with your Pelican case of all your handle accessories. But all of that is also available as a set. And yeah, that's the Hexa. All right, this is the UAP4, our universal adapter plate. And it's basically a big cheese plate with a whole lot of pin locked quarter inch and three eighth inch holes, as well as pairs of M4 holes around the sides so that you can add a bracket like an RMB3 or an RMB7 rod mounting bracket. On the top or the back, we have the dovetail interface for a bud plate. So the bud one comes with every Alexa 35 on the directly screwed into the bottom of the camera. And the bud three is available for the Alexa Mini LF. It's the same system that we have. Basically any base plate for the Alexa 35 will use this sliding system. And then on either end, and I know this plate doesn't actually have either end, it's a prototype, but on the proper one, we will have a flat front and back here, which has also a bunch of different mounting holes. So I can use this for say an existing bracket like the SSB1, or we have a new lightweight rod console. This is the LWS7 that will allow me to add rods onto the front of a UAP4. Now I can put this in two different positions on an Alexa 35. The first, as I mentioned, was for the base plate. So if I take out my CBP here, I can set that aside and then I can slide in from the front or the back, uh, the UAP4, just like that. And now we have this kind of very slim line there we go. Very slim line and flat base, which I can adapt to all sorts of situations. So maybe I wanted to do a hard mount or something like that. I could use this UAP4 and then leave it attached to whatever it was mounted to, or I could use this as an adapter to various different stabilizer plates. Um, and of course, I, I have a large range of balance, you know, uh, potential with this. So I can slide this whole system forwards and backwards quite a long way. Now at the front, this is where I can mount the LWS7, which is also a new part. And if I put it in the default position, which would be with these two holes towards the center, like so, now I have rods that are optically centered for lightweight 15. But as you can see, I, this like bracket kind of pops out below the plate. So if you wanted to still put this uh, plate or camera onto a flat surface like a table, then you can unscrew the screws and put them into these two bottom holes and then shift the whole plate up like this so that you can still get rods in there for say a lens motor, but you don't have to have, an, or you don't lose that flat base. Now there's one other place that I can put the UAP4, which I think is quite cool. So if I take this out with a little safety pin, now I can slide this into the vertical format adapter. This plate allows you to run the Alexa 35 sideways on any of the base plates for the camera if you're doing say nine by 16 shooting for social media or shopping center billboards. But now I can use this plate to enable the UAP4 to slide in. And then I have a really big cheese plate on the side of my camera that I can quickly take on or off. So for example, if you were doing virtual production or something where you needed to have a lot of accessories on your camera, like audio send and receive and timecode boxes or metadata trackers or whatever else, you can mount those all to a UAP4 and then very easily take them on or off when you need to say pack up the camera or change the shooting style that you're working in. So I think that's a pretty nice uh, use case for the UAP4 and the vertical format adapter. And sure, if you wanted rods down the side of your camera, you could also do that with the LWS7. All right, a very quick history lesson. We introduced the first CBP-1 or compact bridge plate back in 2018. And even though we've iterated quite a few times with you know, coming up to the CBP-5 and CBP-6 with the Alexa 35, the broad design goals haven't really changed that much. And they are that you have a shoulder pad and a bridge plate mechanism in one plate so that it can be smaller and lighter than a collection of different parts that you have a shoulder pad, which is very close to the bottom of the camera, in fact, as close as possible, so that the center of gravity is lower and you can have stable handheld operation. We have all of the rod standards in one plate and we have a quick release dovetail mechanism. So here, I can drop this straight onto a dovetail. I can still slide it. I can use any existing ARRI standard dovetail that have been around for decades but I no longer have to bring the uh, whole camera system to the back of the plate past the safety stop to release it. I can just pop it straight off. And anyone who's had experience using say, a big Alexa LF or an Alexa Classic with a long zoom, trying to get the perfect angle when you go onto or off a slide plate, 
it can be a bit of a pain. But I totally get why people like the existing system. And so when we introduced the Alexa 35, we also introduced the BPA6, which was a plate that still had lightweight 15 mil rods at the front here, but that allowed you to use any existing BP8 or BP9 bridge plate so that you could use the existing mounting mechanism like this and then lock and come off. Now, over the preceding years, we've had a lot of people ask us to take a hybrid approach where we've had the benefits for the handheld operation and the lightweight kind of design of an all-in-one system, but with the traditional mechanism. And now we have it. So, we have the CBP5LW and the CBP6LW. And the only difference between these two new plates is the rod standard. So, CBP5 is always 19mm studio, same with the existing plates and CBP6 is for Studio 15, and both plates support the lightweight 15 standard. Now, we are not replacing CBP5s with the CBP5LW. It's just an option. You'll be able to purchase the full plate separately, or if you're an existing owner of a CBP5, you'll be able to buy an upgrade kit that just includes the bridge plate part so that you can uh, swap between the quick release system or the traditional bridge plate clamping mechanism if uh, you want, depending on jobs, or maybe you've just been looking, after this, looking out for this plate for quite a long time. So we have two existing lines which both offer all the benefits just with different clamping mechanisms with the new CBP5 LW. And why LW? Well, it's more lightweight. And actually, because it's a simpler mechanism, it's actually the exact same mechanism from a BP-8. Um, we save about 100 grams or 15% of the weight of the uh, quick release version of the CBP. So there are pros and cons to either system. We either have a slightly heavier weight, but a faster system for going on and off a tripod, or we have the slower, but more traditional bridge plate mechanism, and you get to save about 100 grams. We're not here to tell you how to do your job, we're just here to make it a little bit easier, so the choice is yours. If you've AC'd on an Alexa 35 job before, you're probably pretty familiar already with the articulated mounting plate, which is this little guy that flips up out of the way so that when you have something mounted to the side of the camera, you can still get access to the ports. And you can also slide it up and down and mount it in various different angles and orientations, whatever you like. This plate's been really well received, it's shipped with just about every Alexa 35, but we can't help ourselves and we've come up with a second option. So if you undo the clamp, you can slide out the plate and then you can slide in the new NRB160, which is a NATO rail bracket that is 160 millimeters long. So that has kind of two dovetails on it. So I have NATO on one side and the dovetail necessary for this clamping mechanism on the other, which means that I can drop it in and now I still have that articulating mechanism, but for a NATO rail, which will work perfectly with our NRCs or NATO rail clamps, like this NRC2, which is designed for all different kinds of video transmitters. So now I can drop that straight onto the side here, I can lock it off, and then I can lift it up and out of the way when I need to have access to the ports on the side of the camera. Now, of course, you could do a very similar thing with the existing AMP1, but then you would still have to have some kind of quick release mechanism mounted to this in order to get the video transmitter on or off. And let me tell you, they will add certainly more distance away from the side of the camera than this nice, sleek and simple and thin setup that we have thanks to the NRB160. But folks, that's not all, because the NRB160 can also be used as a NATO rail that you can uh, mount anywhere you like, because you'll notice in here that we have these two screws and I can undo those and you'll find that they are M4 screws that will conveniently go in the next hole along and then pop out the side or the back of the rail here. So if I undo this one and I move it over and now we have that same uh, interface that we introduced with the RMB3. So I can mount this NATO rail to anywhere on the camera which has two M4 spaced holes. So there are loads and loads of options for where I can put this, just like our other NATO rail bracket. So this is a standard NATO rail that can also be used in the articulated system from the AMP1. How good is that? So now we have two plates which are designed specifically for stabilizers. And with the first one, I'm sorry, but I need to borrow a bit of your imagination because I couldn't get it here today, but I can explain.
It's called the SAM6355 and it's a plate that is basically a middle distance in length between these two plates I have here. This is the regular SAM6 which will adapt from any bud plate on an Alexa 35 or an Alexa Mini LF into a Trinity 2, an Artemis 2 or one of our stabilized remote heads. So you can slide the camera on here and slide the whole package straight into a stabilizer. No tools, kind of cool. The SAM6450 is for the same cameras in the same devices, but it's longer to accommodate longer lenses and it also has the option for a built-in lens support. So this is the CLS1 which can go along here and then I can basically screw it into a lens support post on a zoom lens or maybe a big prime without having to run bars and a separate lens support. Now the SAM6355 as I mentioned is halfway in length between these two but it still has the option for the CLS1. So if you wanted a plate for your Trinity for say a, a big heavy prime, maybe an anamorphic prime that isn't very long but it still needs a lens support or you just want to clamp down on vibrations in your rig then the SAM6355 that's about this long would be for you. The second little uh, invention that we have here for stabilizers is this. This is the RMB9. So it's a rod mounting bracket that will also work with any bud compatible plate, including most of our SAM plates to allow you to run an, a 19 millimeter rod on either side of the camera package without them sitting kind of all the way down where studio rods normally would be. So for example, if I take an Alexa 35, maybe I slide out my compact bridge plate and I can slide in a SAM6 like so. And then I can lock that off up here. I have it now inside my Trinity system. Well, I can drop the RMB9 straight onto the front and I can either slide it on or actually if I undo the clamp all the way, I can do this and then I can tighten it up. So now I'm able to run a short 19mm studio rod which is much less likely to slip than a 15mm rod and put one motor on this side and maybe one motor on the other side over here so that I have all the weight at the front that might help with balancing and certainly means that I don't have to run a full bridge plate to still get 19mm rods. They're also going to be slightly in towards the center than if I was running a roll mounting bracket on the side brackets which will also help with the total package size when I'm using it in a device like the Trinity 2. Sorry, we forgot to record an outro, but here I am to say thank you for watching all the way to the end. If you'd like any more information, it's all available at ari.com slash PCA. All right, we'll see you in the next one.